evening. The Apollo 12 moonwalkers are in a rest period now before their scheduled second stroll early tomorrow morning. It's only the second time in human history man has reached the moon, but world reaction was interested, not wildly enthusiastic. Something quite normal for America, according to a student in Warsaw. But it wasn't normal, not for anyone. The first moon ship, Apollo 11, missed its landing site by four miles, and nobody cared very much. But Apollo 12 was designed for a pinpoint landing within walking distance of the old Surveyor spacecraft that's been sitting in a crater since 1967. So the descent of Apollo 12 began with the very gentlest of undockings. Back off, Dick. Minus, uh, I got minus one and uh, nothing, so forget it. Ends up at Houston, looks good. How's it too, Jerry? Real good, Dick, real good. Okay. Okay, Dick, y'all left 60. Hey, Pete, you're cutting that out to me. Roger, go off box. Unlike Apollo 11, the lunar module did not gyrate about the sky, letting the command module pilot look it over. All maneuvers were performed by the command ship, whose position, since it remained in orbit, was less critical. As the two ships drifted around the edge of the moon together, command module pilot Richard Gordon dove his vessel away from the lunar module, giving Conrad and Bean a clear run to the moon. Then, out of sight of Earth, Conrad fired the descent engine and headed down. An hour later, Conrad and Bean began the last few thousand feet of their descent. They sounded something like a baseball pitcher-catcher combination, as co-pilot Bean not only read off instrument readings, but kept up an encouraging chatter to Conrad at the controls. Conrad spotted his target, as the touchdown is described by Walter Cronkite and former astronaut Wally Shira. Hey, there it is. There it is. Oh, my God, right down the middle of the road. Outstanding, oh, 43 flights because this is the flight that was to prove out pinpoint landing. Roger. So far there's been only one major failure of the Apollo 12 mission. Their little television camera, like this, 
some $78,000 worth, stopped working about 40 minutes into the moonwalk. Apparently, astronaut Bean inadvertently aimed it at the sun, burning out its picture tube. Before that, it sent excellent color pictures a quarter of a million miles back to Earth, even after Conrad at one point turned it upside down. We begin with his descent from the moonship to the moon. Recalling Neil Armstrong's remark about a small one giant step for a mankind, this was a harder step for him, possibly because he's six inches shorter than Armstrong. trouble keeping the camera right side up. scheduled CBS News live coverage of tomorrow's Man on the Moon activities will begin shortly after midnight Eastern Time.